In this how-to video, I will walk you through the supporting file accompanying chapter 13 of writing software. As with chapter 11, each one of the design iteration in the project contains a pair of files, a Microsoft project file and Excel file. Here's what this looks like, literally for each iteration, and they are numbered just like in the book. You have a pair of an Excel file and a Microsoft project file. There's also a readme file describing all of this, just like there is a readme file for every one of the supporting folders in a download. The Microsoft project file for each iteration captures a network. The two useful parts you can get out of it is the start and finish date of each of the activities, and of course the float value. Let's look at that. You can see here the solution number two in the Microsoft project file. You can see here also the extensive use of color coding. This is very useful when you're doing the assignment. Note, in order to actually see the colors, you have to look at the detailed Gantt chart, not at the Gantt chart. If you just look at the Gantt chart, you're gonna get the black and white. But if you go to the detail, you will see the colors I actually added. And again, the two useful values here are the finish dates, useful for the earned value uh, charts, and the total float, useful for the risk calculation, of course, during staffing as well. The Excel file is where the bulk of the analysis is done per iteration. That's where you get the duration, the cost, the efficiency, and the various chart for each iteration. Here is the Excel file for iteration two. There's a table here where you calculate the shallow S-curve, the planned end value. Here's the plot of that end value curve. There's the staffing distribution chart, including color coding for what is direct cost. You can see easily how to calculate the direct cost versus total cost. Please see the other how-to videos showing how to calculate these particular charts. There's also a summary tab that shows the cost, the duration, the average level of staffing and efficiency. And there's also a complexity tab that shows how to calculate complexity for this project. Please see the how-to video on calculating complexity. The bulk of the analysis of the entire project, not just individual solution, is done in a pair of analysis files. Those are two Excel files. Those two Excel files are parameterized, so you can actually use them as templates for your project. The Trademark Project Time Cost file even contains some bonus material beyond what you see in the actual chapter. For example, you see the time cost curve and the throughput analysis, which doesn't appear in the book. There's also the mathematical correlation models and the various uh, numeric analysis of the project. Let's see that file. First, you see here a table with the various solutions from the iterations. You can see the specific direct and indirect and total cost. This chart shows you the plot of the time cost curve. You can also ask Excel to create for you a mathematical model, which is what this table is doing. You can see the equations. And what you have here is just the coefficients from it. And literally the rest of this file is completely parameterized based on these values. Even the total cost values here is calculated by adding the indirect and direct. This plot shows you the time cost curve. This X is actually comparing visually the broadband analysis that was done for this project with the mathematical model. You can see it's actually pretty good. Here you see the project plans that's used for the throughput analysis. And here you can see even the replacing of the S-curve with the linear regression line so you can do numerical throughput analysis. Here's also the efficiency curve for the project. The bulk of the system risk analysis is done in a TradeMe system risk analysis Excel file. It calculates the risk for the various solutions, builds not just the risk curve, but uh, a corrected direct cost curve. It provides the formulas, and as a bonus, it even calculates the risk cost over points. Let's examine that file. On the right-hand side of the file, you see tabs for the various solutions, risk calculation. Please see the how-to video on how to calculate the risk for the various solutions. And you can see even the decompression points here. All those values are populating this table over here. And you can see here the raw risk curve, activity and criticality. 
And I can see they don't match exactly, and the reason is activity risk is skewed somewhat higher in this project because of risk outliers. Now, you can actually correct it by replacing every outlying float with the standard deviation, the average plus one standard deviation. And that's in fact already done in this curve, and it's still not a perfect match. You can actually replace it with a tighter range instead of one standard deviation by half a standard deviation. Let me replace that. And you can see then it's a perfect match. Now the design team decided instead of adjusting the activity risk, just use criticality risk in TradeMe. What you see here on, on the right hand side, you see the risk modeling for the criticality risk. And those models are simply, these coefficients are simply copied over here. And literally the rest of the spreadsheet is done by using these numbers. So it's a highly parameterized spreadsheet. The other thing the design team had to do is to calculate the direct cost at those points of decompression. And if you recall from chapter 13, that's done by adding the cost of three developers over the time span of the decompression. Once you have that in place, you have a rebuilt direct cost curve and you can actually have a correlation model for it. The spreadsheet uses the same indirect cost as the uh, uh, other solution, it just extrapolates it. And that enables it to have full-blown time cost curve adjusted now by the risk. So what you see here is the direct cost curve and the risk curve plotted side by side. You see here the risk uh, curve, the model of the risk curve with the various solutions. And the spreadsheet also uses a solver to find some interesting points, for example, the point of max risk and the point of uh, 0.75 risk. This is done using a solver. Let me demonstrate that. You can go to the solver, point at the target cell, say 0.75 over here, and say I want to get the value of 0.75 on this cell by changing the value of this cell. And when you run the solver, it would actually calculate that exactly. You can also use that to find values like the minimum direct cost, or you can find an analytical solution, which is actually what this spreadsheet is doing. Much the same way you can find the decompression target, which is the second derivative equals zero on the risk curve, the point of zero at 0.5, and the point of uh, minimum risk and 0.25, and so on. For the risk uh, crossover point, this is completely parameterized. This long formula over here simply takes the value of the risk model and the value of the direct cost model, calculates the risk cost of a point which is where the rates of growth of the risk is less than the rates of growth of the direct cost scaled in absolute value. And again, this was done using a solver. 10 to the minus seven is of course zero in Excel, but that's what the solver could find. And that's uh, this file for calculating the risk for TradeMe, the case study of chapter 13. For more on project design, see Writing Software.